age old disclaimer out of the way first. All content is comfortably clearable with all the jobs, so no need to be put off by any job in particular. Though, if your own personal DPS choice is influenced by rankings, or like me you're just curious about this stuff, then that really should be okay too. Before diving into the current DPS rankings, there are a few points to cover for well-rounded context. Core stat used in this video will be r slash raid DPS from FFLogs. This includes your personal DPS minus bonuses from other players' raid buffs. But importantly, it also includes the extra DPS that other players in the raid have done due to your own raid buffs. For example, the summoner ability Searing Light increases other party members' damage by 3%. This is the only singular measure available to compare all DPS jobs at the same time, as certain jobs like Dancer and Bard heavily rely on raid buffs they put out for significant percentages of their overall contribution to a party. So remove these and there's no level playing field to compare. Now, very importantly, to avoid riling people up, I'm going to set out context for this video in particular and the usage of these stats. I've seen one too many videos re this is how you should read FF logs. I've never actually seen one that's articulated the context of statistical averages and why that is important to how the individual watcher or reader plays the game. I'm sure there's videos out there, but I've not watched the whole of YouTube, so forgive me. Two key elements for this vid. One, FFLogs compiles its average stats and rankings from thousands of different player submitted entries. Importantly, these will be compromised of a large variety of raid parties consisting of different job types and an even larger variety of players with different skill levels and objectives. Secondly, this video is for the majority of players like myself who do all of their higher end content like Savage via the Party Finder or apparently the Duty Finder in Japan or in statics slash friend groups that don't care about job selection beyond potentially fitting the mould for the party buffs, e.g. one caster, one ranged and two melee. These two elements together are vitally important, as if this is how you play the game, it is not going to matter if a very specific selection of jobs working in unison together boosts a job's power level higher up the DPS rankings, as via the party finder etc, more often than not you're not going to be in that optimum party setup and will be raiding alongside a different set of jobs and players every time you play. Subsequently meaning the nature of FFLog's rankings coming from average stats aligns nicely to this style of play. The flip side to this for a full rounded understanding is largely reserved for a minority of players who like to do things like speedrunning content in the quickest time possible, who can guarantee the same party setup each time with highly skilled players going above and beyond to develop specific party compositions to output the maximum party damage possible. To bring this to life with a hypothetical example, and I repeat hypothetical so don't quote this scenario, Ninja with its raid buffs could have higher RDPS than Samurai, however because Samurai which doesn't have any raid buffs to give can generate a higher personal DPS number, then Samurai may be making better use of all the other party members raid buffs contributing to a higher overall party DPS. AKA that summoner's 3% searing light buff is generating more damage via the samurai than the ninja. Tipping the balance here is the composition of jobs in the individual party and subsequently what raid buffs are involved. To note regarding our DPS, despite being a good way to compare jobs, it is in isolation at least, not the bee's knees when it comes to looking at your own personal performance. Given it is impacted by how well or poorly the rest of your team utilise your buffs, other stats like ADPS and NDPS should also be reviewed. As a side note of consideration, given the nature of the reliance on other players utilising your job's raid buffs, the proclaimed selfish jobs like Samurai, Black Mage and Machinist, regardless of rankings, can actually be very strong choices in parties with randomly skilled people, as if you are skilled enough to consistently output very high damage then you can ensure you are always boosting your random parties with your own skill alone, as opposed to outsourcing some of it to other players that you don't know. Onto the rankings. Straight out of the gate, we'll look overall across the current raid tier. We see Ninja currently out in front by an absolute whisker, with Samurai very closely behind in second place, and Monk basically sticking out of Samurai's rear end in third. Dragoon drops a touch, though still in close contention to the others in fourth, with the final melee job Reaper finding itself in 6th spot with Black Mage sandwiched in between. 
The remaining two casters are then represented by Summoner in 7th and then Red Mage in 8th. The range physical then round out the bottom three. Bard, followed by Machinist and then Dancer. Noting the range physical have definitely all closed in on the pack since we last did one of these videos in 6.08. And at this point, I think it's worth pausing to remember that although the ranged, for example, are at the bottom, the way FF14 encourages taking different job types via passive party buffs means that you don't need to be put off just because a particular job type is further down the rankings. Next up, we'll look at individual savage fights, as the fights themselves also have a major impact on jobs effectiveness, as aspects like add phases and downtime all influence performance. So next we'll have a look at how jobs are doing on a per fight basis. In P1S, things stay very much the same as the average rankings. In P2S, we see Samurai jump into the lead, but the rest is largely unchanged. In P3S, largely due to the extended ad phase, we see a bit of a reshuffle with Monk at the top and Reaper leaping over Black Madge. Bard and Dancer actually leapfrog their way up the leaderboard over Summoner and Red Madge for this fight. In P4S, the main noteworthy points are Black Mage jumping up to 3rd spot in Part 1 and 2nd spot in Part 2, with Ninja retaining the title across both. Now, before I close out the vid, I'm keen to reiterate the context point here. Again, these rankings give a strong sense of, on average, what is happening across the landscape, to offer a very valid insight for players like me, who enter almost every raid with a different set of players and jobs but they do not give an ultimate viewpoint of what is optimally achievable with each job in the correct player's hands and party setup. To hit this home, I'll add that when studying the parties who currently rank in the top 5 fastest kills for each Savage raid, two things stand out. One, almost all groups take a ninja, which you'd probably guess from the rankings, but less obviously, almost all groups in that bracket also took a dancer. Last point for the day is that this is a snapshot in time, Given new player data is being added every day, some of these positions do move around a little, especially when some like Ninja and Samurai are so close together. Bard is not suddenly going to be the top without developer interference, but very close spots often switch around. Though do expect some significant ranking changes post patch 6.2. All done, like and subscribe to complete the duty.